And then we're going to form this pit right here. Now that we form those pits, I can start to connect them. So I'm going to take the sharp end of the clear discoid. And we're basically going to take the tip of that clear discoid and start to form planes. So if you look at the picture, for example, here you've got a plane and a plane and a plane. There's several intersecting planes. That's what we're going to try to do. We're going to take this clear discoid, form a plane on that side. Now we're going to come over to this side and form the next plane. Now we'll come over, we're going to form this plane now. Now we're going to come and form this plane. And now we'll come over and form this plane right over here. start to form this plane here. And now we're going to form this plane. give you an initial view of what the anatomy starts to form as we form those planes. There is a, a fifth cusp on this tooth called the cusp of Carabelli. So you see that little line right there that represents a fifth cusp instead of four. And it kind of comes across and intersects with this other line. So we're going to form that right here. Put in our cusp of Carabelli. Okay, so we're forming our fifth cusp across here. So there's that fifth cusp that we just formed. Okay, at this point we're going to come over to these pictures and we're going to start to just true up. Primary anatomy are the main grooves down through the center of the tooth. You can see them through here. Secondary anatomy are these little finer grooves like this one, uh, this one perhaps, these little extensions. So we'll start working on some of that finer anatomy now for a minute. I'm just going to start on this side and kind of work my way around. There's some little radiating points off of there, so we'll radiate out a little bit. We'll come over and start on that groove. There's a little radiating line that comes out this way, so we'll pick that up. Here's another one on this side. Let's go ahead and pick up that one. Out here we're going to have some little radiating extensions. pressure right through there. That one's pretty rounded, so I'm going to flip over to my rounded end of my cleoid disc, which will be using the cleoid portion of that. Finish forming that extension. And there's a little line that comes out and over the edge. Sometimes if your anatomy is getting a little hard to read, you can take a toothbrush and just clean out the grooves. That'll help you to see if you're missing anything. So that's kind of where we're at on our anatomy. Uh, at this point, we're ready to start um, doing our finishing work. So I'm going to make sure our, our measurements are right. Facial lingual, we're aiming for 11.8. We're currently at 
11.8. Initial distal, we're aiming for 11.3. We are at a little narrow there. So we got a little carried away on our medial distal reduction. Currently we're at about 11. So off by just a little bit, it could have been just a little bit wider medial distal. We may add a little bit of wax here in just a minute. Um, gingival occlusal should have been 8. And we're pretty good there. Okay, we're going to show you how to add some wax since we're a little shy on our on our mesial distal width. We're going to add a little bit to this side because there's kind of a gouge in there anyway that bugs me. So we're going to take our warm instrument, our instrument, warm it up. We've got a blowtorch going here as you can see. We're going to warm that instrument up a little bit. We're going to steal a little bit of wax off the bottom of our block. Just a little puddle. We'll warm that again and then we're going to touch the wax and then dump our wax. If you don't touch the wax first, if you don't preheat the wax, then when you add, it will flake off again. Because cold wax hitting warm, or, uh, warm wax hitting a cold tooth structure won't fuse. So you touch the warm instrument. I can use my warm instrument to kind of lead the wax around and to feather out the edges. So, there's our addition. We'll turn this torch off. There's our addition that's been added. It's still just a little rough, but that should have fused nicely if we've touched the wax with our warm instrument. So, let's go back to our knife. We'll trim that up just a little bit. Get back the shape we initially created. We'll go back and measure again, see if we've recaptured that distance we wanted. We're now at 11.1, .1, which is a little bit better. I think we'll add a little bit to the distal side also. Okay, we'll take our torch and our instrument. Steal some wax off the bottom of our block. Warm again, and we'll just touch the warm instrument into the tooth and then dump our payload of wax on there. So, back to our micrometer, we're aiming for 11.3 and we're now at 11.3. So we're good. Again, we'll just trim up that wax a little bit so that we've got nice smooth transitions. Okay, our dimensions are all where we want them to be. We're going to start polishing. Uh, to polish the wax, we usually take a nylon stocking, stretch it over our finger, and start.